Welcome to New York. Whether you've been to New York before or a first time visitor, there are so many things to do in the city. Dave and I have been here at least a dozen times and we have barely scratched the surface. So this time for New York City, we got ourselves the New York Pass so we could check out all the must see tourist attractions for first time visitors and returning visitors. A great way to start your day is to come on down to the Hudson Yards and go to the Vessel. Now you can get into the Vessel anytime if you want to pay $10. Otherwise, you can go up for free if you book a time. You just have to go to the kiosk and book your ticket. And then after you're done, grab a coffee and go walking along the High Line. New York has some really cool neighborhoods for sure. Check out the Vessel. Look at that. Isn't that pretty cool? It's an art installation here in the Hudson Yards. And it's pretty, pretty neat, I will say. Cool thing to see, some great photos. So the High Line is this great elevated walkway throughout all of the skyscrapers and neighborhoods of this area. And it used to be an elevated train, so it has some great views that you can just walk along, have a coffee, meet up with some friends. It's a, a great little atmosphere here in downtown New York. Let's go see the Statue of Liberty. The Statue of Liberty Ferry leads from Battery Park and we suggest you go early in the morning to beat the crowds. Or if you visit during the off season, it's a much more pleasant experience. Well, I have the New York Pass to go and see all of my sights here and attractions and I'm at the Statue of Liberty. So when you get here, you have to go inside the castle to get your actual ticket. Your virtual ticket doesn't work, so you've got to get in line and get your ticket now. So there you go, lots of lines. We're just waiting for the ferry now. You really cannot miss coming over to the Statue of Liberty. You can take the ferry here, it's a great view of the Manhattan skyline, and then you can go to Ellis Island and the Statue of Liberty and see Lady Liberty up close. The Statue of Liberty takes a long time to visit, so be prepared for a few hours of your day. The ferries take a while and lines can be long. There's a museum to visit, there are viewpoints of New York City, and if you add a stop at Ellis Island, you can count on half a day on this excursion. But it is something worth seeing. Plus, you get a river cruise included in the trip. Something I highly recommend doing is going to the Empire State Building at night. New York City really comes alive with the city lights and it's the best time to go up. Also, the crowds are really light. The Empire State Building observation deck is open until 2 a.m. With no crowds, we had the freedom to check out the displays and take our time enjoying the view of the skyline from each side of the 102-story landmark. Normally you have some really long lines and big crowds, so they've got a great interactive museum in the bottom of the Empire State Building to tell you all about how it was built and how it was constructed to keep you busy while you're waiting in line. But we get to walk right on through because it's quiet tonight. Another great viewpoint here in New York is going to the top of the rock. And not only is it a great viewpoint, it's a really cool destination because it is home to NBC Studios, you know? It's at 30 Rock, 30 Rockefeller. And it's got a great view of the Empire State Building. It has a bunch of different platforms that you can look out. And then you can pop by and maybe see Jimmy Fallon of The Tonight Show. Similar to the Empire State Building, we suggest going to the top of the rock at night. The observation deck closes at midnight and the crowds are almost non-existent. Plus, the city really looks beautiful, lit up with its neon lights. If you make your way to the World Trade Center, you will be able to visit the 9-11 Memorial. It's a really touching tribute to the people who lost their lives during the 9-11 attacks. 
There are two memorial pools. There's another beautiful memorial and the Memorial Museum. So it's really worth coming down here to pay your respects and learn more about the incident where nearly 3,000 people lost their lives. And uh, this is a very important means of escape for hundreds, possibly thousands of people. Here's where they're located, right here. The best way to get around New York is definitely taking the subway. It's really easy. You just have to get a Metro card out of one of these machines. You just press where you want to go. It does all the prompts for you. It's only $9 to get your Metro card and they already automatically put time on it. So it's pretty great. You can also just do a single ride if you want. But I say fill up your Metro card to get, oh, at least three or four rides out of it and then go see New York for the day. The New York Pass gives you access to all of New York's main museums. So even if you just want to pop in, you can. It's easy to fit several museums into a couple of days if you want to just see the highlights. Museums we recommend are MoMA, the Guggenheim, the Museum of Natural History, and our favorite, the Metropolitan Museum. The New York Pass is really easy. You just come in and scan your pass and you're good to go. It's impossible to see everything at the Met in one day, but a few suggestions are the Egyptian collection, which transports you to Cairo, the Impressionist section, featuring all of the greats, including Van Gogh's self-portrait, their St. Peter's Basilica, and the Greek and Italian sculptures will take your breath away. Well, I think the Met has to be my favorite museum in New York. It's just massive and it has huge displays. It's really over the top and very impressive. I think they've done a great design throughout each of the installations. Don't forget to come to Rockefeller Center. It's good in both the winter and summer. Fulfill your dream of playing the big piano here at FAO Schwartz. FAO Schwartz closed for a while, but it's open again at Rockefeller Center. We are going on a tour behind the scenes of Radio City Music Hall. I've got my pass. I'm a VIP. Radio City Music Hall has been home to the Rockettes since 1932. We took a backstage tour to find out all about this impressive stage that was so high tech, there were soldiers guarding it throughout World War II. It is still a feat of engineering to this day, using giant hydraulics to move the stage and turn it into everything from a basketball court to a Broadway production. We popped in to see the Rockefeller apartment where Judy Garland and Walt Disney hung out, and we even visited the Rockettes rehearsal space. Well, it's a pretty cool tour here in the backstage of Radio City Music Hall, and right now we're checking out the ladies' lounges. No video is allowed on the tour, but photos are allowed. We had been to Radio City Music Hall before for the Christmas extravaganza, so we do have some video from our first time there. The Wall Street Bull is quite the attraction. I don't think you can ever get it unless you come first thing in the morning without people. So line up to take your picture with the Wall Street Bull. <laughs> Pretty funny. You gotta come to the center of where all the money is and this is Wall Street. Uh, a lot of historic buildings here and you've got the New York Stock Exchange right behind me. Well, Central Park is huge. That's We've just been walking around. It's really beautiful. 
but we don't know where we are and we don't know how to get out. If you want to waste a good amount of time and a good afternoon of just walking in nature, this is the place to go. The Central Park. <laughs> So in Central Park, just across from where John Lennon used to live, there's a tribute to him here at Strawberry Fields. The best way to get to Brooklyn is walk across a Brooklyn Bridge. A trip to New York wouldn't be complete without seeing Brooklyn. Once you get over the Brooklyn Bridge, go to the Brooklyn Bridge Park and the neighborhood of Dumbo, meaning down under the Brooklyn Bridge overpass for great views of Manhattan. Make sure you have some pizza at Grimaldi's and check out the neighborhood of Williamsburg. Come out and shoot the iconic Manhattan skyline. We are at Grand Central Station, the hub of New York City. New York was made for shopping, so be sure to check out one of the flagship stores like Macy's or Bloomingdale's. There's also outdoor markets to visit around the city as well. Come to Hershey's for a hot chocolate or just chocolate. And you can't forget to visit Times Square. We pop in to see what's going on every time we're in New York. It's the heart of the theater district with Broadway theaters all around. It's a meeting place, there's plenty of spots to eat, and it's a great place to people watch. And those were some of the things in New York that we love to do. Have you been to New York City before? Let us know what we should do the next time we visit the Big Apple. If you enjoy our videos, be sure to subscribe because we put up new videos each week and we don't want you to miss a thing, so make sure you ring that bell for notifications.